For a long time, there has been talk about the dark and scary side of Hollywood's film industry. Many conspiracy theories spread on the internet with rumors that celebrities, such as actors, producers, singers, and directors, are part of secret societies that commit terrible acts in search of fame, success, power, and the elusive eternal youth. Some people believe that these theories are nothing but inventions, with the sole purpose of defaming the famous and harming their work. Others truly believe that many of these celebrities have ties to some kind of evil entity or hidden spiritual force. But what about when these accusations come from the very backstage of Hollywood, with insiders sharing their disturbing experiences involving famous colleagues? Then the situation becomes even more sinister and dark. It's like a curtain being pulled back, revealing a dark and disturbing side that many prefer to ignore. In the video I'm about to share, you'll have access to impressive and shocking accounts of people who have experienced firsthand the darkest secrets of Hollywood. Get ready because we're going to enter this mysterious universe and uncover the truth behind the glittering curtains and impeccable facades. The solution to face this darkness is before you, and I'll show you how to find it. These experiences range from involvement in trafficking and sexual exploitation of minors psychological abuse to involvement with satanic cults. And in today's video, I'll show you a very impactful testimony from actor and director Mel Gibson. In addition to starring in many successful films in the past, Gibson became internationally known for directing the film The Passion of the Christ, which to this day remains the film that best portrayed the sacrifice and death of Jesus. Get ready to hear disturbing and surprising revelations about the entertainment industry's backstage. What Mel Gibson has to say may change your perception of Hollywood forever. Be prepared to face the truth, no matter how dark it may be. Mel Gibson recounts that he once had a personal encounter with the very adversary of Christ, and that from that moment on, his professional trajectory was ruined. Did this actor really come face to face with the one who, according to scriptures, will assume power over the earth and dominate humanity during the period of the Great Tribulation? Stay with me until the end, as I'll share how this encounter went, what happened to Mel Gibson's career since then, and in the conclusion, I'll give my opinion on whether this person could be the possible Antichrist. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel. Just click on the subscription button below the video and activate the notification bell. Mel Gibson was born in the United States and gained international fame in the late 1970s with the film Mad Max, a low-budget production that conquered the world and elevated the young actor to the status of one of the great stars of cinema. From that moment on, he became one of the most sought after talents by producers and directors of American cinema co-starring with various renowned actors and actresses of the time. In 1987, another success came for Gibson, who doesn't remember Lethal Weapon, right? Mel Gibson's success continued to grow, and he gained recognition for his skills both in front of and behind the camera. However, his encounter with Christ's adversary drastically changed the course of his career. Gibson's rise did not stop. He made dozens of other successful films, lent his voice to animated films, such as Disney's Pocahontas, among many other successful works. But Mel Gibson's peak was yet to come. In 1996, he won two Oscars for Best Actor and Best Director with the film Braveheart, which tells the story of the battle for Scotland's independence in the 11th century. William Wallace, Mel Gibson's character, enters the battle and falls in love with the fight for his country's freedom after his wife is brutally murdered by the English army. Hollywood and the world expected that, from that moment on, Mel Gibson would become one of the greatest names in the history of cinema, alongside Steven Spielberg, for example. But shortly thereafter, the actor who was loved by everyone began to have his name involved in a series of scandals and controversies related to alcohol use and anger control problems. The strange thing is that, despite all the news that channels and gossip magazines published, 
Mel Gibson still seemed calm and charismatic in interviews, outings with his family, without ever offending or assaulting anyone. But the scandals kept coming. He was arrested for drunk driving, accused of making prejudiced comments against black people, and allegedly made threats against his ex-wife. Unfortunately, this sequence of adverse accusations caused the public's rejection of Mel Gibson to increase alarmingly, making the actor no longer summoned to participate in any major films. The curious thing is that other prominent figures in Hollywood at the same time faced much more serious accusations and nothing happened. Meanwhile, Mel Gibson was disappearing from Hollywood's radar. He even managed to play some less relevant roles in a few films at that time. But the media hardly publicized these productions and movie theaters were practically empty most of the time. Because for the audience, the image that remained of Mel Gibson was that of a drunken, disturbed, unbalanced, man who assaulted women and insulted people of other ethnicities and therefore did not deserve a second chance or the right to have his version heard of the accusations he faced. You may be wondering now, but sir, why did Mel Gibson go through all this, going from the top to the bottom of the barrel in such a short time? What made him lose control of his life without apparently anything happening? And that's where we come to the theme of this video. In 1998, he gave an interview to an American television channel that sparked the fury of the press and the film industry against the actor. The theme of the interview was the routine of Hollywood stars, their relationships, friendships, friendships, the people they went out to dinner with. And on that occasion, Mel Gibson reported a peculiar experience he had during a meeting with actor Christopher Walken, renowned for films like Sleepy Hollow, and catch me if you can. This meeting between the two actors took place in a hotel in New York, and, according to Mel Gibson, it was so terrifying that he truly felt in front of a demonic being. Let's see the moment when I he mean, this is a bizarre place. Um, and it doesn't take very long, if, if, and I'm sure you've experienced this if you've stayed here for any length of time. And no matter how strong you are when you come in, off the farm mm. with those convictions and those and a certain line of attack no matter how strong you are you are going to be affected by this place mm. his whole um, um, opinion about women on film from beginning to end is very brief he says women on film either naked or dead both is better mm. And it's like, whoa, mm -hmm. ooh. No, he came to see me on a rooftop in New York. I said, hey, can I, can I talk to you? And he said, sure. And he, he floated in mm. sideways mm. through a crowd of people. He was wearing black. And it was like one of those old vampire movies where they don't walk, but they glide. Mm. And he was a dancer, you know, so he has yeah, very, yeah. he's very, um, um, you know, graceful. Yeah. And he moved sideways and he just sat down in a chair next to me. And it kind of frightened me mm. um, and he's a very smart guy mm -hmm. and we started talking and I didn't you know say much of anything about reading the script nothing I just started talking about the Middle Ages and mm. and he um, and he began to talk tortures and we swapped tortures because I'd read this book on torture mm -hmm. and and I I tried to recall some of the most heinous things I'd ever read in this book and and he was like oh Oh, and he'd try and top it, and it, it got. And my assistant was there, and he left because he he couldn't stand it anymore. Yeah, the the air had turned cold, mm -hmm. and then he left, and I I wanted to leave, <laughs> and because I knew that I didn't want to work with him. Yeah, and he was getting scary. Yeah, and then I turned around, and it was on top of the Peninsula Hotel. I turned around to avoid his steady gaze at one point yeah. and I was looking at a building with the top of the sixes on it so there was a huge illuminated triple six, six in red yeah. and I went from that to that to that and he, st he started smiling yeah. and I thought oh no Chris Walken is the Antichrist yeah. you know <laughs> when I came over here I was oh god I was in my my uh, mid-twenties right the first time I really came over here you know I had a whole bunch of weird paranoid suspicions 
about what the hell was going on because there was a lot of stuff I couldn't understand. Right. Um, and nobody was really bothering to explain it to me. They don't. <clears throat> and it, 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 and I formed a bunch of opinions about the town and about the people in it that were like, surely that couldn't be because a whole place can't be like, you know, weird town, you know, where the stranger wanders in and, and all the people are in the bar and they all shut up when he looks at him and, mm -hmm. and they tell you don't go out of the house on the hill and it's like that. Mm -hmm. And then you go away and you think, no, that's, I was wrong. I mean, that's insane thinking. I'm paranoid. I imagined that stuff. That couldn't be the reason for why so-and-so was acting like, could it? Mm -hmm. And then you find out later on the track that you are exactly on track mm -hmm. with a lot of this stuff. Not specifically on no. track, but that you could, uh, that some of your worst nightmares were real at the time. And you think, <gasps> mm -hmm. now this is what I mean by actually starting to swim up or downstream with the rest of the salmon, mm -hmm. you know, eventually if you stay here long enough, yeah. you'll find yourself doing that. Um, and you have to, there's a way of doing it without doing it. Mm. And that takes time. Mm. Uh, and it takes relaxation. Mm. Not being uncomfortable, realizing it for what it is. Projecting. N understanding what it is. Once you understand it, well then you're not afraid of it anymore. Mm. So you can just walk around it and through it and, mm -hmm. and then get on with what you tried to get on with in the first place. A place like this can humiliate you. Mm -hmm. And it can be, it can either, it can humiliate you, it can be humbling. I mean, it, it does rip your life to pieces. Does it? If you'll let it. Yeah. He said, this is a strange place and it doesn't take long for you to realize. And you have certainly experienced this if you have been here long enough. And no matter how resilient you are, you come here with your convictions and a certain line of defense no matter how. Pay attention to this. When Mel Gibson mentioned the number 666 in red neon, exactly on the day he was going to meet Christopher Walken in the middle of that hotel in New York. Another point that draws attention is that Walken smiled when he saw Gibson's reaction to those numbers, as he knew that the actor was a Christian and always emphasized his faith to people. Perhaps Walken was mocking Gibson and his beliefs, and it became so clear that Gibson's assistant felt bad in that environment and needed to leave because he could not bear so much spiritual oppression. After that meeting, Gibson and Walken never met again, let alone worked together on any project. And the worst part is that from then on, everything started to go wrong in Gibson's life for a long time. As you can see, for years, he was accused and judged by the media and once actress Whoopi Goldberg came to his defense, saying that he was never racist, as they were saying. Gibson's life only began to change in 2004, when he produced the film The Passion of the Christ. He wanted to remind the whole world that Jesus came to earth not only to speak of peace and love, but came with a special mission, to die in sacrifice, so that his message of peace and love would be the only true one with the greater meaning of human redemption. And as I said, no cinematic production has managed to portray the biblical prophecy about the suffering of the Messiah so well. See what the Bible says. He was wounded for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. He suffered punishment so that we could be restored and received stripes so that we could be healed. The film was a real success grossing over $600 million at the box office, filling theaters in the United States and in several countries around the world, including here in Brazil, and mainly gaining thousands of lives for Jesus and rescuing many who were deviating from the Lord's path. Given this, I understand that what Gibson went through in that encounter with Christopher Walken and in the following years, with all the persecution and injustices, was actually a great spiritual battle. Satan might not have known that God already had plans to use Gibson to make a film about Jesus' sacrifice, because he doesn't have the power to predict the future, but he knew that that man was God, fearing and wanted very much to be used by him powerfully. Therefore, 
the enemy used all his weapons to try to destroy Gibson and frustrate the Lord's plans. But at no time did God abandon him, and victory came. So much so that now Gibson is finishing the sequel to his film, which will be called The Passion of the Christ. Resurrection and actor Jim Caviezel, who played Jesus, said that this will be the greatest film in world history and that everyone during the filming is already facing many spiritual attacks. Attacks. Now I want to give my opinion on Gibson thinking that Christopher Walken was the Antichrist. Brothers and sisters, honestly, I do not agree with him. I don't think at the time Gibson had a biblical understanding of the true characteristics of the Antichrist. Due to lack of knowledge of the word, he made that statement. God's word says that the Antichrist will be a very powerful and influential man, charismatic and well articulated in the fields of politics and religion, and who will deceive people and force them to worship him. Christopher Walken is a man known in the world of cinema and has Hollywood's respect, and that's it. I do believe that he may have been used by Satan in that encounter with Gibson to try to attack him spiritually, but that doesn't make him the fallen angel let alone one of the beasts of the apocalypse. So, if you felt positively impacted by this message and found value in this video, do not hesitate to share it with your friends and family. Also, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to my channel to receive more inspiring and uplifting content. I look forward to welcoming you in the next video, where we will continue to explore relevant and enriching topics together. May God bless you abundantly guiding your steps and filling your life with His grace and unconditional love.